Silly and welcome to my art channel. In this video, I'll show you how to paint a wet on wet landscape in green oil. Niagara Falls. Enjoy! Here's my regular white canvas. And I'm showing you how I put down some black acrylic paint for the background because when I want to add color on top of it, it will help me later on that there is a solid dark color base. It takes just a few minutes to dry, so I'm just dabbing it on with a, a sponge here on top, some here on the side, and some light smudges on this center area. So with the exception of this uh, black smudging part, the rest of this video is basically real-time. I'll be showing you how I actually paint this painting in the amount of time that it takes to do it. Here is my palette knife with some thin down white paint. Titanium white is the color to use. It is a, a bright white. It's archival. It's opaque. And that's the color you want to use for your paintings. So you add a little bit of linseed oil or liquid until you reach a creamy consistency. And I find the palette knife works the best to uh, put an even layer all over. So I've dabbed my 2 inch brush into just a little bit of phthalo blue. And you see how I go over the sky area with some back and forth motions that are... I, leave, I like to leave some white patches here and there. It sort of puts built in clouds. And, of course, I add some more blue when I run out on the brush. But I keep the darkest parts for the, the upper portion. And gradually let the color run out towards the horizon area. And here I'm using some X back and forth strokes just to smooth out the sky and take away the, the brush strokes. And now we're going to get started on our large uh, background of full foliage trees and bushes over here. So I've got on my palette, which is just a, a plain plastic plate that I throw away after use. I put down a bunch of different yellows, reds, and greens. Sap green, cad yellow, cad yellow medium, cad red, permanent red, Indian yellow. And I mix the colors on the brush and on the palette. I try to put a variety of color in different parts of this uh, bunch of trees. And I like this non-blended effect that the colors sort of, you know, you dip the, dip, dip the brush into, into one color and then go to the next color and you end up with a few different colors at once on the brush and that gives a more realistic look of trees with fall foliage in them. So I'm actually using a smaller flat edged brush for this because I want the trees to look small. And so here I'm just going around from one color to the next and from one area to the next. So if you're enjoying this video, 
please like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'd love to hear your comments. If you've got anything that you'd like that you'd like me to paint, some place in the world that's beautiful or that looks very interesting. I'd like to add it to my landscape collection. So feel free to let me know. <clears throat> so over here I'm making sure to add in some green as well, because the leaves don't all change color at once. This is still mid mid autumn. And there's plenty of green still. Among all the yellows and oranges and reds. And this is a lot of fun. This part of the painting is sort of mindless work that you just let your creative brain take over and put all the colors wherever they flow. Because if you're going to use your logical brain, it just won't look right. It will come out creatively. The logical part of the brain and the creative parts of the brain it's two different modes. So if you want to get creative, you have to sort of shut down on the logic, move over, over to the creative side, and just let things flow. So this was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed putting all these colors around and seeing how it came out in just a few minutes that it took. Now there are many views of Niagara Falls that you can see and it's interesting to see how many different colors the water can appear in and how many different backgrounds you can get buildings with with the trees depending on which side you're standing where you're taking your picture from and so I chose this viewpoint because I like that it had it had sky it had trees it had the falls and it had some of the the water underneath where it lands. So we're putting the finishing touches on this bunch of background trees and we're going to move over to the actual folds themselves. So at the very top it's sort of flat so I'll be using my palette knife to put in some lines of thalo blue you can mix a bit of black a bit of prussian blue to get a darker blue color but not to match the sky exactly And I want to leave some white patches here because the sun is shining off the water and there are parts of it that are glistening white. So it's sort of a loose area of the flat part of the water before it actually falls down over the falls. I guess it's a bunch of rocks or cliff. It's pretty amazing. I saw some photographs of the falls in that in the middle of the winter and you see how they they just froze midway and they're completely frozen in a, in the falling position from the top to the bottom. Imagine what a crash. As soon as it melts and all the water comes rushing down. Thank <laughs> you. 
So here I'm using my two inch brush again. And we're just showing how the the water comes over that edge. And as is usual for me, I leave some parts of it lighter and some parts darker so the color is not mixed so well. It's white and blue because I want some parts to appear brighter and sunnier than others. And you see how the black underneath adds some darkness of those, those cliffs behind the folds because there are some parts where the water runs a little bit thinner and you can see some of the cliffs in the background. So we're just going over this edge with even strokes from top down. And we'll go extending them down even further until the point that I want them to meet the huge cloud of steam that comes up from all this water rushing down. <clears throat> My reference photo that I was looking at to paint this painting, the waters had like this a very blue color. I was debating whether to to do this shade or to choose a different color that was... I saw some photographs that it was a very light, interesting green color, the water, and a very cloudy sky, heavy dark gray clouds. But I chose this. I think it's very bright and cheerful, not so ominous like a dark and cloudy sky. So here I'm just showing how I mix my white to get that creamy, pasty, uh, liquid white that I always talk about. I do that in a small plastic bowl. Put in the white paint and I add a few drops of oil and gradually add in more if I see that it's not creamy enough. And here we are producing all that steam, all those uh, I'm not sure what to call it. I guess it's the, the water that just comes from all the rushing of the water downwards. And it flies around into the air. So I'm just tapping my brush. I'm using a, a large round brush or a one inch brush into the that liquidy white. And tapping over this whole empty area right underneath where it falls down. And that's going to give the effect of all those big clouds of water and steam that are that keep getting produced from all the water rushing down. I've never been to Niagara Falls, but I can imagine the roar that is produced from all that water flowing. It must be deafening. And many pictures that I saw showed how there's a place for people to to hike right around the falls. That area on the left that I that I made dark. That is a an area similar to that. There's like special hiking trails with uh, with railings and places to stand. And I'm, I think that. I don't know, people bring along their own raincoats, or maybe it's provided, I'm not sure. But you can get really wet from all this water flying around, it's almost like rain. 
So here on the right, I'm putting in some rocks in the background that, retrospectively, I should have put in when I added all the, the black acrylic. Because having to do it later with oil just means that I have bigger chances of picking it up with my brush later on, which I'm not so keen about. I do like putting the dark background ahead of time so that whatever paint goes on top is not picking up the paint from underneath. It's not cheating. I've seen professional artists do that. It's just preparing the background of acrylic since the canvas itself is anyways a, a piece of canvas primed with white gesso, which is acrylic. So adding darkness to it to make things easier later on is very much in order. And I do pick up too much of these uh, dark rocks with my white sprays that are on top of it much more than I would have liked to. But in any case, you see that the rocks in the background are really nothing special. It's just a, a shadow of it. And we're tapping our white thin paint over. Trying to avoid the direct area of the actual darkest parts of this. And soon we'll be coming to the more wet on wet part of this. As you see, I put a layer of my liquid white here on the bottom. And we'll be coming to that soon. But in the meantime, we have to finish up all these, this huge spray area. And I'm really just tapping with the, the large round brush just to get the, st the spray all over in front of the falls. Well, that was a, an attempt of my fan brush to to bring some water over the rocks. Like just some smaller falls. And as you can see, it did pick up much of the color underneath. So that it looks like the rocks are falling with water. So I highly recommend that if you want to make a painting that has much dark area, it's a very good idea to choose a dark color, whatever one matches your background the best, and just to lay that down first, let it dry, and start painting on top of it. So here we are putting in <coughs> the water underneath using the fan brush, and some I mixed in a bit of permanent green, Prussian blue and phthalo blue. I tried to put the permanent green and the Prussian blue in the darkest areas that are most overshadowed by this large rock mountain hill thing on the left. And the front areas <clears throat> that are more in direct view and sunlight, I tried to, to uh, leave them lighter with more phthalo blue predominantly used in those areas. So I'm really just using a bit of paint on the brush and because I have my layer of liquid white on the canvas already, the brush picks up the white and mixes together with the color. And that is how we blend directly on the canvas. 
and I'm using sort of crisscross back and forth strokes and I'm making sure to leave plenty of empty spaces to show the chappiness of the water. On the left side where the where that large rock is. So I actually uh use some of that dark area. Part of it is reflected into the water. It is not just the rock, it's also the reflection. I'll start painting on top of there also. And the edge of it you can see is darker. But also that area on the right. There are some darker. Mostly the lighter colors were saved for the center. And the most patchy white areas. Now probably if I wasn't trying to fit this tutorial into a 25 minute video, I might have taken more time to make smaller strokes and uh, finer details, but being that I was trying to, to show this in a limited amount of time, and it is real time, it's not sped up, so you can actually see that it took this amount of time to produce this level of a painting. If you attempt this on your own, you can always take longer. It's not a marathon. So here I made sure to connect the water to the falls. There shouldn't be any gaps. And we'll just add in that layer of steam to the bottom. I use a lot of this liquid white paint, and in general, I run out of it pretty fast. So I always keep my my tube of white paint handy, and the liquid or the linseed oil. Just to quickly mix up a new batch whenever necessary. So here, very gently with the fan brush, we're just putting in a few more strokes of, of waterfall. And a bit more color here on top. Just so it should really look like it's flowing. And any touch-ups, things like that, you can do. Just be very careful not to mess up what you already put down. Because once you start putting too much paint down, it just turns into mud mixing. So I try to touch very lightly. Which means that you have to put on a little extra paint. But that is what's necessary. Now we have to do our rocky area here in the front. And putting down that dark color in the beginning means that I just have to put some, some basic rock shapes with some various shades of brown paint that I uh, left once again not, not very mixed. Brown, white, black, so you get a sort of grayish, streaky, and brown bunch of rocks. And 
and try to make it look natural by not putting them perfectly one next to the other. Just sort of here and there. And also touching the canvas lightly so that you leave out those uh, holes in the paint when you pull it down with the palette knife over the canvas. And that has a very nice effect to make rocks and even mountains. So here with a one inch brush we'll tap in some grassy areas on this rock. As you see, putting down the dark first really helps with all those shadowy areas that they are they're just there already. So they don't have to worry about putting in darkers and lighters. It's just all the highlight that we're putting on top of the dark shadowy area. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this real-time tutorial. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, enjoy your autumn, and let me know if you've been to the polls. I'm hiding in the rocks. <laughs>